Hello there, hi ho yours truly back in the cinematic hot seat. So, last night, Sunday evening, I decided to watch these two movies starring Bryce Dallas Howard, both directed by M. Night Shyamalan. So, kind of thinking about it, I have hit two birds with one stone. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show to come. Starting off with The Village from 2004. Yep, 20 years ago. And Bryce Dallas Howard, you know who she is. She was Gwen Stacy in Spider-Man 3, the Romyverse. 2007. Claire Daring in the Jurassic World trilogy. One year later, she was in Pete's Dragon. 2016. 2016. Black Mirror Season 3, Episode 1, Nosedive. And she was Elton John's mom in Rocket Man 2019. This year, she's in a spy action comedy film called Argyle, coming to U.S. theaters next Friday. And I shall be there, premiere night, February 2nd. Show enough. Yours truly will make a review about it. Show enough. Movies she was in that you never heard of as As You Like It, 2006. And in 2008, The Loss of a Teardrop Diamond. And before The Village, she was in an indie movie called The Book of Love. And before that, she was performing in theater and arts at NYU, New York University, in the early 2000s, before her starring debut for the Lexicon and mainstream general audience in The Village in 2004. Before that, she was cameos and extras in Ron Howard films such as Parenthood, 1989, Backdraft, 1991, Paul 13, 1995, Ransom, 1996, the Grant You Stole Christmas 2000, and A Beautiful Mind in 2001. And this is no surprise or shock. As you know, her dad is Ron Howard, who's Opie Taylor in The Andy Griffith Show and Richie Cunningham in Happy Days. And under the wings of his parents, the late and great legends, Rance Howard and Gene Spiegel Howard, became the Hollywood directing legend and lore as we know and cherish and love for the last... 50 years, half a century. Wow. Whoa. Now it's Bryce's turn. First under the wing of her dad, Ron, soaring high and continuing the family tradition and craft on her own wing since the early 2000s, who directed several short films such as Soulmates, Orchids, and even a music video, M. 83, Claudia Lewis, and she did a documentary, Otter and Fathers and Dads 2019. She even did a, she even directed a commercial called Break Free from Volkswagen last year. Links shall be provided down below for your viewing pleasure and research and development. She also directed episodes in Disney Plus Lucasfilm Star Wars spinoff, The Mandalorian in 2019. Season 1, Episode 4, Sanctuary. Season 2, Episode 11, The Heretics. Season 3, Episode 22, Guns for Hire. She also directed an episode in The Book of Boba Fett. Season 1, Episode 5, Return of the Mandalorian. Plus, she did voice acting work as the Yado in Tales of the Jedi. And she did video games like Lego Jurassic World from TT Traveler's Tales Games and published by Warner Brothers Games. She voiced Claire Derry in the Jurassic World Evolution Games from Frontier Development UK and Maggot from Annapurna Interactive. I hope she does more voice acting work because she has great range and the potential is river deep and wide. Back to these movies and the twin stars of this show, The Village and Lady in the Water. Both of these movies I saw back in the day, back in the day, 20 years later for The Village and 18 years later for Lady in the Water. I rewatched The Village and Lady in the Water and The Village still holds up and as my third favorite BDH movie. If you haven't seen it, yours truly highly recommends. The story is about an Amish style community lives of cut off from the from the outside world by the woods in which they believe dangerous creatures exist. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, we are going to go into spoiler territory. I didn't like the twist where they was in present age and year 2004, not the 1890s. I wish it stayed in the late 19th century. Plus, I wish the monsters were real and not from the elders and from Adrian Brody's character of the village created by the billionaire family, the Walkers, who decided the real world was just too much for them to live in. They just said, let's go build our own world and forsake the H.E. double hockey sticks with this one due to tragic and unfortunate events involving family, you know, family of the Walker family and and and, and those who associate with the Walkers. And plus, you know, we can, and then with the Ivy Walker art, she can still be blind, but as a chosen one who slays the monsters. This is just me, but it is what it is. But that's like my only negatives of the village. I wish it was more of a kind of like a Japanese, you know, a blind samurai sword, but only she used her cane and all of that. Wouldn't that be cool? But yeah, but you know, just a nitpick. But yeah, definitely. This is a solid movie. Definitely an 8 out of 10. 8. And when I say 8, that means great. Now to Lady in the Water. 18 years later, and once again, we're going to fly into heavy spoiler airspace once again. This movie is a bedtime story in a film. Think of it just as that, and you'll come to warm up to it much more than thinking it is a meta light fairy tale or light horror or the survival of the Nars stories, you know, uh, amphibious counterpart or rom-com with mythical water maiden. Yes, the trailers and the teasers did some serious deceiving because they gave that horror fairy tale, rom-com, metal like fairy tale spinning presentation and that we all were straight up duped. But shame on the marketing crew for that, but why it's understandable and no disagreeing, and I wholeheartedly agree with the mostly negatives to meh reviews of this. Personally, just me, and I said this in a previous video, I wish this stayed an actual fairy tale with light horror elements and the monster the scrat, you know, hunting down the last of stories, the North Bryce Dallas Howard character's kind, and had Paul Giamatti and the, uh, and the, and, uh, and the residents protecting her, you know, protect the last cat. And, and then the giant eagle comes at the end and whisk her away, take her to a, you know, a much safer place, you know, that makes sense. But yeah, but, you know, it really is. And according, and Am Light Shyamalan said this out of his own, I mean, Am Light Shyamalan said this, it is a live action bedtime story. That's all it is. There's no twist in it. It is a, it is what it is, a bedtime story. So yes, yeah, if you're thinking about what the trailer show, yeah, you mean a huge disappointment. But it's a bedtime story. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah, but if you have the patience and the will, because this is very slow now, it's very drawn out. It's very slow paced, too. As in, you know, step by step, brick by brick, block by block. I think it was like two hours, but it feels like it's four. But yeah, so, you know, have some patience, have some will, you know, muster the strength, have you a tag team partner to will you to go through it. And once again, think of it as a bedtime story and you will love it more. Your heart will grow to it because Bryce Dallas Howard, her roles as Ivy Walker and Story to Narf, you can't deny her presence. You cannot. She is just a tour de force, a radiant presence. I mean, she walks on that screen. You pretty much just bow down. And the time to end this. And never ever take Bryce Dallas Howard for granted. And definitely don't ever underestimate her. She make, she'll make you a believer in the most hearty, healthy, and wholesome way. A true shining diamond for our generation and the inspiration for the next. And that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed and happy watching and God.